up? Of course, it's me, your boy, Richie Rich, at Consumer Prime Support. Shoot another awesome video, because that's what we do. Man, what's up, what's up, what's up? Man, you know at Consumer Prime Support, we review appliances. Today, we're going to focus on a built-in microwave. This is a high-end appliance that we're about to work on. It's a GE Cafe. All right, so you have your traditional GE. You have G GE Profile. You got GE Cafe, you got GE Monogram. So now we got a GE Cafe built-in microwave that has a lot of functions, a lot of features. We gonna dive into that joint, man, break this appliance down. You already know this is just the intro. All right, so we're gonna be real generic and uh, we're gonna discuss this appliance a little bit, show you some of the functions and features, talk about it a little bit. Of course, when we go into the lab, we're gonna do the warranty, we're gonna do the parts, we're gonna do the price, and of course, give you our overall grade to let you know exactly how we feel about this built-in GE microwave. All right, so let's get it. Let's make it happen. Come on with your boy. Let's get it. I'm out. Peace. So now we're on the Home Depot website. All right, so we're going to talk about just some of the basic functions and features. Again, we're going to be extremely generic because this is just the introduction to the built-in microwave, which is a GE Cafe. All right, um, let's look at the product overview. And right now we're on the Home Depot website. Um, it says create a kitchen. That's a total reflection of you. Um, it says performance that entertains but one of the things that we want to focus on again this is a built-in microwave and this built-in microwave has five ovens in one all right it says using a single appliance as a convection oven a microwave oven um, a toaster oven warmer and proof oven and a precision cook oven with advantium technology all right so that's the great benefit there it has a seven inch full color lcd screen we talked about the precision precision cooking as well it also have cafe fits it says if um if it doesn't fit exactly then ge cafe will give you up to 300 dollars to modify towards installing your new built-in microwave all right that is pretty good i like that that's going to probably give you a little notch on our belt when we do the review but we like that feature as well it also has speed cook all right, um, eliminate preheating and deliver perfect results four to eight times faster than you can with a conventional conventional oven. We talked about warm and proof, uh, proof mode. It's cleanability. Always keep your oven looking fresh and new with a steam clean option. It has steam cooking as well. Smart home capability. It can say sync your five in one oven with Advantium technology with the latest integrative home technology. One of my favorite things that I saw right here as well is crisp reheat. It's nothing like going to the store, man. You go into your little sub shop, you go into McDonald's, you go to Chick fil A, you get some french fries, and then you got to reheat in a microwave. All right, or you get some chicken from either Wawa's or your farms, or where you even get your chicken from, you got to reheat in the microwave. It's not the same. But this one helps you with the crisp reheat. It says enjoy crispy result at microwave speed with over 20 programs that make leftovers taste new. Loving that. And then of course you have your warranty. It says buy with confidence thanks to an extensive warranty plan. Stuff like that as well. So we're going to get into that a little bit. But as you can see man this joint is fully loaded and we're going to dive into the lab and we're going to tell you exactly how we feel about this microwave. But with all that, you already know what time it is, man. It's me, your boy, Richie Rich, at Consumer Prime Support. You help me, I help you. We both help each other. Till next time, you already know what time it is, man. I am out. Peace.
now you're saying you how to go Just like a lightning from a clear sky I wasn't ready to say goodbye Ever since you left There's nothing but a cloudy sky And there's no day, there's only night Now I'm sitting all by myself All right, for so this portion of the video We're going to talk about the functions and the features I'm hoping that you guys enjoy the intro to this video, man, to the GE built-in wall oven, a GE cafe. Again, it's a notch above your standard GE, and we're gonna dive into this material just to see what can it do? What are some of the functions? What are some of the features? All right, so let's dive into that real quick as we, as we break down this microwave. All right, so from looking at this microwave, right now we have the two screens set up. Um, to the right, we have your owner's manual. Again, it's a GE cafe. And we're just gonna allow the video to roll as we break this down. All right, so you can see here we're breaking it down right now. You can see the door, really good look. I'm loving the way that it looks. Um, it's a GE Advantium, so we're gonna pause right there for a second. And we're gonna talk about what's the Advantium, all right? What is so different about this particular thing here? All right, so this is on page eight. So I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see that as well. All right, so let's see. Getting to know Advantium. What is Advantium? All right, it says the new Advantium oven uses breakthrough precision cooking technology to harness the power of light. The Advantium oven cooks the outside food much like a conventional radiant heat while also penetrating the surface so the inside cooks simultaneously. While halogen light is the primary source of power, a microwave boost is added with certain foods. Foods cook evenly, that's one, and fast. Um, that's another, and it says retaining their natural moisture. The Advantium oven is capable of precision cooking. Convection baking, that's one, so we got precision cooking, all right, so it has convection baking, broiling, toasting, warming, proofing and microwaving all right it says the precision cook feature is the biggest benefit of the advantium oven no preheating is required to precision cook place the food in the oven and start cooking immediately you see time saving because there is no preheat and because precision cook cooks faster all right, so that's where we are. You can see the little picture in the actual diagram inside the owner's manual on what is really taking place in the precision cooking or the Advantium cooking. That's the benefit of that. We're gonna dissect some of these cycles as well so that you'll be able to see what is going on and what's taking place. All right, so right now we're looking at the inside cavity of the oven. If you look where I paused it at right now, this is where the, um, the convection is, where the heat is. So we're gonna go to the actual features portion of this just to break this down a little bit so we can get more information. All right, so this is where we are. The features, all right, so of course you have your turntable, your metal tray or uh, metal uh, grill tray. You have your wire oven rack. Um, you have four, uh, number four is a clear glass tray. Number five is the upper halogen light ceramic heater that's up here as well. Of course, you have your window um, that allows cooking to be viewed while keeping microwave confined in the oven. So you want to keep that. You got your door handle. So we're going to show you a, a visual of that. The door latches as well. That's number eight. Um, the lower ceramic heater. That's number nine. So you have a heater at the bottom. You have a heater up top. Um, you have your control panel, that's number 10. And of course you have your rare convection system. And that's what we're gonna dive into in the back that we see here in the, in the uh, video. We're gonna talk about the rare convection um, system. All right, so we're gonna let that roll for a little bit. And like I said, I, I like the way it looks as far as the, convection, the, the cavity of the inside, the stainless steel cavity. Um, it has some room in it as well, so we're gonna pause it um, right about there. All right, so we're gonna jump to page 14 and talk about the convection. All right, let's dive into that. Convection baking. All right, it says, warning. When baking, remember that the oven door 
and dishes will be very hot all right so they got to make sure they um let you know that as well all right bear with your boy all right so i want to zoom into this a little bit more all right it says convection baking allows you to cook foods the same way as a conventional oven using a heating element to raise the temperature of the air inside the oven any oven temperature from 250 degrees Fahrenheit to 450 degrees Fahrenheit may be set. A fan gently circulates heated air throughout the oven um, over and around the food because the heat, the heated air is kept constantly moving. All right, so that's the thing there, that's the difference. It's constantly moving, so it allows it to heat up a lot faster. Not permitting a layer of cooling air to develop around the food some foods cook slightly faster than in your regular oven cooking and of course it says before you begin make sure the turntable is in place that's one use the metal tray at all times when single or two level baking all right so this is where we are let's look at the tray the turntable must always be in place when using the oven all right keep that in mind another one that says put food directly on the metal tray to convection bake all right when you're gonna see the actual turntable tray or the metal tray it's glass on top but it's metal underneath it's really heavy i'm not gonna lie to you i think this is probably one of the heaviest turntable trays i've ever um touched or lift up or had in my hand it's extremely heavy it's built really good and one of the benefits of convection i wanted to just put out there when you're using a regular standard oven right if you're just baking there's always dead spots in the oven so that's one thing that you're going to have to remember the difference between the convection is that it circulates the air so they could prevent a lot of the dead spots because again you, you can put stuff all the way in the back in the left corner or in the right corner and it does never cook properly because of dead spots so this helps that a lot all right so let's look at this here it says for two level baking place food in a metal baking dish or directly on the non-stick tra uh, metal tray place the aluminum baking sheet or your baking dish with food on top of the wire rack uh, it says stand the rack with food on the metal tray all right so we have that there as well and it also is going to give us some tips all right so bear with me as we um try to figure this thing out because it's a little pain in the butt there all right so i'm getting i'm getting it i'm getting it all right so let's see all right um cooking tips for convection baking all right so it says cook time maximum is three hours all right when cooking items that go directly onto the metal tray do not place the tray into the oven during preheat place the food directly on the tray and place the metal tray with food onto the turntable after the oven is finished preheating all right so you want to make sure you're doing that as well um, so it gives us the example here it says when cooking items in a dish to be placed or the metal tray place the metal tray in the oven during cooking it says during preheat for optimum cooking performance all right so i'm gonna zoom in a little bit there so that you can see how it's supposed to be and how it's supposed to look all right so you want to be careful with that So that's there um, so we're good let's talk about that's the convection there as well so we can actually move on to the next point I just wanted to talk about the convection um, they have toasting broiling so when we get to that point of it we can actually talk about that as well all right so we're gonna let the video roll all right so like I stated before this is a turntable motor you see the glass and then there's metal underneath really sturdy man you can see the ring you can see the coupling as well everything is made underneath of there it's really sturdy really 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 like that portion of it as well all right uh, you have your door handle there that you can see all right so that's the door handle let's go back up to um what we talked about initially the features here we go here you can see that and then you got the vent all right so cool good there so we already discussed a lot of that and here goes the platinum glass panel man you're talking about a finish that's durable that looks really nice 
Um, check out the parts portion of this video, man. It'll tell you exactly how much that joint costs. It costs you some money. All right, so I like the digital display that you see there as well with the clock. Then you see the Wi-Fi um, symbol there as well. Really love that feature here. This is the LCD screen. This is the microwave portion of it where it tells you that you can add 30 minutes, you can microwave, you can do the oven. Of course, you got the precision cooking, you got recipes, um, steam and all that stuff there as well. So we really, 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 really like that. All right, so we might, let's see what else we're gonna get into as we look into this joint. Let's talk about the settings. All right, so settings, we got that also on page 20. So let's dive into the settings real quick so that we can get into this joint. All right, so settings. All right, so this is where we are inside the oven here. Um, it says these are numerous settings that are accessed by pressing, of course, you see the gear. It says in the top right corner of the main screen. All right, so that's where that is. And then, of course, you have the settings where you can set the clock as one. You have the lock controls. You have sound. You have display. Um, you have cooking as well. It says the oven is set to Fahrenheit. However, in this setting, the cooking unit can be changed to Celsius. And, of course, you have auto receipt conversion can be turned on in order to automatically reduce the programmed cooking temperature for convection bake or convection bake multiple. Note um, that this will only reduce the cooking temperature, not the baking time. All right, so you want to keep that in, in mind as well. It says system, it says the screen allows you to clear your saved used data and shows the current software version. So you have that there. You also have your remote or Wi-Fi remote enabled. All right, so we have that. It says this appliance is configured to remote operation at any time. It says do not store any flammable materials or temperature sensitive items inside or on top of this appliance. By using the Wi-Fi connect feature, you will be able to control essential oven operations such as temperature setting, timers, and cooking modes using your smartphone or tablet. It says, of course, select the, the gear setting, the Wi-Fi remote enable, follow the instructions on your oven display and phone app. It is necessary to turn on Wi-Fi before using remote enable on your oven. And of course, it goes into details on how to do so. All this stuff is gonna be in the owner's manual as well. Um, um, and show you how to do that. Remote starting your Advantium right um that's so you have a remote enable on and the icon of course you can activate on your home screen and you can start the advantium cook cycle from a remote source 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 such as your cafe appliance app or voice commands from amazon alexa or google assist all right so if you have any of those you can do that it says when starting a precis precision cook or microwave cooking cycle, you will need to have opened the microwave door within the last five minutes. The last five minutes restriction is to help ensure food is in the microwave before starting the cooking cycle. There is not a five minute limitation with oven and convection cycles. All right, it says when remote enables off, you can still view the cooking status from your app. All right, so that's one of, like I said, with these smart appliances, man, you can do so much from the app, remote starting, communicate back and forth with your oven on the app as well. Um, and it depends on GE. I know GE have different appliances where you can use one appliance to communicate with the other. Like if you have your washer and your dryer, you can com communicate back and forth with one of the two. Um, they have this huge range hood exhaust that's a that's a tablet as well so if you want to make coffee from your refrigerator yeah they got a refrigerator with coffee that you can make coffee with a curie machine yo it's it's crazy but I'm, I'm i can't wait to get my hands on that but either way you can communicate check stats do so much with these things man but uh, as, as always what we recommend just be careful with identity theft 
Uh, remember, it's just like your smartphone so people could get into it. Some of them also have cameras on some of these appliances as well. So you don't want people to be looking into your home when you're not home and stuff like that. So you want to be super careful. All right. That's one of the things that I'm going to recommend. Um, of course, you can always see this as well. It says when remote enables off, you can still view the cooking status from um, your app. You can turn off your cooking modes or you can use the timer um, and setting features from your smart device. With remote enable off, you can you just will not be able to start a cooking cycle on a smart device. All right, so you wanna make sure that it's on. And of course, blah, blah, blah. You can disable the Wi-Fi features, remove the advance, and remove the Advantium from the Wi-Fi connect, select disconnect and forget Wi-Fi option under the Wi-Fi remote enable menu. All right, so that's that there. Man, I went too far. Jeez me, Christmas. All right, so we're gonna discuss some of the other features that it has. Um, you have uh, cooling fans, all right? So you wanna pay attention to your appliance when it's operating, when it's running, um, certain noises or certain things that might take place. On this one, it says, the two cooling fans automatically turn on as a required, on as required to keep the internal oven components and control from overheating. All right, so it's just like anything else, all that heat from using the oven or the microwave, it cools it down. It says the fan is automatic uh, the fan will automatically turn off when the interval parts are cool. One or both may stay on for 30 minutes or more after the oven control is turned off. All right, so you want to make sure you pay attention to that because that does happen. Um, accessory storage drawer with some models. You don't really have that here anyway. Um, cook time completed. To remind you that you have food in the oven, the oven will display completed and beep once a minute until you either open the door or press done. All right, so eventually I'm sure that can be pretty annoying, so you might wanna to try to get on that. <laughs> All right, let's rock. So that's some of the systems there that we talked about. All right, so we can dive into the precision cooking and that's number 11, page 11. So we're gonna jump on that real quick and go into the precision cooking, man. All right, here we go. All right, it says precision cooking power level. All right, so of course on here you have crisp reheat, custom fresh and frozen. All right, one of the things that I, I'm sure that I'm gonna love when I check this oven out is the crisp reheat. Man, there's nothing like buying french fries or even having pizza. Um, you got a crisp reheat that you can use. I really like that feature, so we're gonna dive into that as well. And so we can find out exactly what's going on there and it's supposed to be other features that it has so we're going to dive into all that all right it says the advantium uses power from high intensity hol halogen lamps and a ceramic heater a convection system and microwaves to cook food from the top right that's one the bottom that's two and interior simultaneously to seal in moisture and flavor again you don't have any microwaves that you have just sitting there on, on, on any appliance right now that's having where you can cook from the top, the bottom, and the interior. Like, it's, it's crazy what they're doing with this stuff so, it can, so your food will come out so much better. It's when, it says, when using the preheat um, set menu foods, the power levels are already selected for you. However, power levels can be adjusted when using preset menu foods and custom precision cook. Each power level gives you halogen lamp or ceramic heater power and microwave energy for a certain percentage of the time or provides heating from the convection system. All right. It says, for example, U07 under halogen lamp and ceramic heater on 70% of the time. L07 is lower ceramic heater on 70% of the time. So, of course, you have an upper and a lower heater that you can choose and it's of course it says microwave right so you can microwave on 50 percent of the time yo it's a lot i suggest reading this owner's manual it's gonna be in the description box you already know that but man all right so let's go into the upper lower and the microwave real quick it says select which is the upper select a higher setting for thin foods requiring a golden brown top like i tell you guys it's an oven Yo, you, it's crazy. Example, fish fillet, toast, 
boneless chicken breasts select a lower setting for thicker foods and foods with higher sugar or fat content example muffin rolls casserole so that required a longer cook time bro that is awesome lower select a a higher setting for thick or dense food that may not cook quickly in the center example steaks casserole it says select a lower setting for the thin foods microwave select a higher setting to shorten cooking time for dense or heavier foods example they'll talk about casseroles whole chicken um, select a lower setting for uh, delicate foods examples like breads or foods requiring long cook times for tender results stew and pot roast man you talking about an appliance that is fully loaded man i love that joint i really like that joint so we're going to dive into that again all right true that's a lot um let's zoom into this real quick all right So it says precision cooking feature. Let's dive into that real quick. All right. It says if the door is open during cooking, the oven will stop. Um, close the door, press and resume pad to resume cooking. All right. It says any time during cooking, you can change the cooking time. You can change power levels by pressing power. We discussed that as well. Um, precision cooking meats in the oven may produce smoke to, it says to cook for additional time after a cooking cycle has been completed use the continued feature as instructed on the display and of course it's talking about the racks this is the turntable must always be be in place when using the oven it says put food directly on the metal tray to precision cook all right that we got it you got to use that um, cooking tips to ensure consistent and even browning browning foods directly on the non-stick metal tray arrange food as shown below all right so let's look at that foods can can touch but should not overlap circular pattern example biscuits and cook cookies side by side side by side patterns meats and poultry um, fresh meat, chicken, fish, seafood that has been frozen should be thawed before cooking. The microwave defrost feature can be used for other frozen pre-packaged foods follow package directions. So of course if you got um, cris uh, cris um, is that croissant rolls, breadsticks, um, single layer of appetite appetizers, stuff like that, you can use that as well. So we like that. So that's good. That's good there. All right. Um, precision cooking. Um, it says follow cooking suggestions on the oven display. Um, cookware will become hot. Oven mitts will be needed to handle the cookware. Um, place food directly on the metal tray. We've discussed that plenty. Um, metal grill tray when cooking unless prompted by the oven to do otherwise. Um, use the metal tray in the same way. You would use a, a shallow baking pan or baking tray. It says in addition to the cookware provided, you can use non-stick casserole dishes, pies, plates, and other heat safe cookware. Place them directly on the turntable. It says be sure to select the size that will, will rotate easily. All right, so this is where we are. Place the metal tray on the turntable. So this is stuff that you can pause um, if you want to get more information on. All right, um, crisp preheat um, reheat precision cooking. It says this feature is designed to reheat leftover foods, items that tend to lose their crisp crispiness when reheated in a microwave. I love that. I love eating um, leftovers. I could eat leftovers for days. I mean, I'm talking about days. I mean, if it's good food, it's good food, man. I don't care what nobody say. Um, turn the food over when the oven signal turns food over. All right. Turn the food over when the oven signals um, turn food over for certain foods. Oh man, that tells you when to turn it over. I like that. I ain't doing all that. You know what I'm saying? I just preheat it, man. Reheat it and let the joint come out. It says, uh, or reheat it so the food tastes good. I, I ain't doing all that. I'm ready to eat. When the oven signals check for doneness, check to see if the food is done to your liking. 
um, for certain foods. All right, so that's where we are. Um, it says food power levels and cooking time suggested. Use your cooking guide and preset precision cooking menu selections. All right, so that's one there. We like that. Um, Advantium gives you the flexibility to cook your food favorite. Um, cook your your favorite dishes. If you want to cook um, a food item that is um, not among the preset selections, use custom precision cook. Man, jeez me, Christmas. Um, so we are again looking at this Advantium. Is, um, so let's look at it. Advantium is already preset to cook over 175 popular dishes. Gosh, that is a lot. It says the preset menu has been divided into fresh, frozen categories to simplify navigation to desired food items. You talking about, man. Woo. Um, it says turn the food over when the oven turns. All right, so we talked about that a little bit. And of course, the doneness, we discussed that already. 175 popular dishes. Bro. Jeez. Um, precision cooking things that are normal. Cooking times, cooling fans, lights. All right, so you want to keep that in mind. Um, cooking times, you could probably dive into that. When precision cooking program, pre-programmed foods, you may adjust cooking time in the display several seconds after you press start. The oven automatically senses the electrical voltage level in your home and adjusts the cooking time up or down for prior cooking. All right, cooling fans, the lights. It says the oven. It says when the oven is on, light may visible light may be visible around the door or outer case all right um the hol halogen lights will dim and cycle on and off during a precision cook cycle sometimes even at full power levels this is normal the oven senses the heat level and adjust automatically yo this is nice we got the oven heat we got sounds and we got interference. So we're gonna dive into that a little bit because we gotta talk about that, man. The oven heat sounds and interference as well. Man, let's talk about uh, uh, oven preheat, oven heat. No preheating is required during the precision cooking cycles. We talked about that as well. The door inside of the oven will be very hot. Always talk about that. Be careful with that. It says do not use cookware or coverings made of paper, plastic, or foil. It's an oven. We already know basic instructions for using the oven for those who already used it or familiar with it. Of course, read these instructions. When cooking for an extended period of time, the oven will automatically reduce the power levels to maintain the appropriate level of oven heat. Sounds, that's one thing. Got to get familiar with the sounds that the, the appliance makes so that you won't call anybody that for service when you really don't need service. It says clicks and a fan blowing are normal sounds during cooking. The relay board is turning components on and off. So it clicks the relays. I'm glad they start talking about that stuff, man, because um, customer instruct will come out, I will come out to instruct you how to use the appliance or let you know it's not broken because you're just not familiar with it. They're gonna charge you for that, all right? So you wanna make sure that you get familiar with the appliance. Um, TV interference. It says TV slash radio interference might be noticed when using the microwave. Similar to the interference caused by um, other small appliances. It does not indicate a problem with the microwave. Move the radio or TV as far away from the microwave as possible to check the position of the TV slash radio antenna. Alright, so that's one of the things that we're going to have to, is probably going to have more issues with these days because of... Um, the technology that we have in these appliances, man, like, it's crazy what you can do. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you want to keep that in mind. All right, so let this video roll. We love that joint. All right, so this is um, fresh bake. Some of the stuff that you have there, convection bake, rose seafood, vegetables. Um, that's the precision, precision. So we talked about a lot of that preset stuff that they already have. The oven, let's go into the oven, man. Um, let's talk about the broiler convection that's on page 15 or 13 and 13, 14 and 15. All right, so we're going to rock into that real quick. So I wanted to save this part of it so that we can discuss it right now. So we already talked about the convection. Talk about broiling and toasting. I love this part of it. Toasting. Whew. It says brawl and toast. Use the upper lamps, the lower heater and 
convection system to broil or toast food similar to a convec conventional oven. It says before you begin, make sure that the turntable is in place. Use the metal tray when toasting and broiling. It says for two level baking, place food in metal uh, baking dish or directly on the non-stick metal tray. All right, so that's what we have there as well. Place the aluminum baking sheet or, or your baking dish with food on top of the wire rack. Stand the rack with food on the metal tray. All right, boom. Everything that you see here is what you're gonna need for using the broiling, all right? Um, cooking tips for broiling, they have some of that. Um, I'm not gonna read all of them. It says the best results when broiling, place food directly on the metal tray. If preheating the oven to, to broil meat, preheat with the metal tray in the oven and place food on the hot metal tray for best um, searing of meat. All right, so you can always pause the video as well that you can see it as we go through this together. All right, another thing, let's figure out, let's see what we got. Toasting tips. For best result, when toasting, use the metal tray. Talked about that. It says most food should be turned over two slash three of the way through toasting. All right, two thirds of the way through th through toasting. It says the crisp exterior may maintain moisture inside foods. Preheat the oven. All right, then of course we have this portion here as well. You can pause and see that for yourself. All right, let's go into warming and proofing. It says the warm feature will keep hot cooked foods at a serving temperature. Always start with hot food. Use cookware and utensils that can withstand temperatures up to 230 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so you can select the oven temperature, see the chart and tips. So we're gonna talk about that and look at that real quick. Low is 140 to 160. Medium is 160 to 190. High, of course, is 195 to 230, and this is in Fahrenheit. All right, it says the crisp scale items. Place food on dishes directly on the black metal tray. Here we go. Preheat on low setting and select crisp. It says check crispness after 45 minutes. Add time as needed. All right. Tips. Always they're going to give you tips as well. Leave food uncovered. Do not use plastic containers or plastic wrap. It says tips for moist food. Cover food with lead or aluminum foil. It says do not use plastic containers or plastic wrap. Preheating is not necessary. All right, so it gives you the chart, and that's one of the things that we love when we dissect the owner's manual. They're trying to help you to best use the appliance, and it's best to just use their instruction. I know some of us are nice with cooking. We don't need no help. We've been cooking, been cooking since we was two. I get it. I really do. But sometimes you want to make sure you listen to the people that make it because it's a lot different from what you're used to. Your old oven works a certain way with all these added features, you gotta keep that in mind. You gotta take that into consideration because it's not like any other oven you didn't use before. All right, so you wanna keep that in mind. Bread, hard rolls, control setting, you got medium, moist setting, you have crisp, so you can set either one of the two. Um, pancakes and waffles, you got it on high as far as the control setting. Uh, moisture setting, you have crisp as well. So you can do all that, you can pause this video so that you can actually see the chart. All right, we like that. Proofing, it says the proof feature automatic, automatically provides the optimum temperature for the proofing process and therefore does not, does not have a temperature adjustment. It says, notes, do not use the proofing mode for warming food or keeping food hot. The proofing oven temperature is not hot enough to hold food at safe temperatures. Use the warm feature to keep food warm. Proofing will not operate if the oven is too hot. Allow the oven to cool before proofing, all right? And of course, back to the tray and the turntable, all right? So that's where we are with that. All right, cool, loving that joint. Loving that, loving that, loving that. All right, so let's make this rock. See what else we got. Man, this joint is fully loaded. Self-clean, man, yes, you can self-clean this joint. That's on page number 20 in the owner's manual. What's this? All right, so that's the microwave. We haven't even gotten to the microwave portion of this joint yet. All right, let's talk about steam cook feature. All right, so we haven't even got, that's the microwave, so we'll do that. Let's go, I said page 20, right? All right, so let's get into this. Um, let's see what we got here. Yeah. Um, Self-clean, sorry, it's page 22. All right, 
care and cleaning all right steam clean it says this feature will create heat and steam to loosen dirt in the oven to create enough steam pour a half cup of water into a microwave safe bowl uh, it says remove remember to use the glass tray once the cycle is terminated wipe oven cavity with paper towel or cloth all right boom show you how to do the joint teach you how to use the joint as well that's what i like all right inside the oven and accessory storage let me zoom out a little bit on this joint um this is on some models all right so it helps you removing the turntable it goes into that and of course um, cooking trays and wiring oven rack all right so you can go into that um, it says do not use abrasives to clean glass tray or wire oven racks that's cool there um, you got a mica sheet to clean the mica sheet allow the oven to cool completely wipe clean with a warm salt soapy cloth all right so that's what's telling you to clean that stuff there as well all right it doesn't yeah so that's cool all right let's let this rock that's self clean let's see what else they got here as well let's move it all right microwave 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 that's page 16 so we got a lot of stuff to look at when we're talking about the microwave let's jump into the microwave we're finally into the microwave so you got so much stuff you can do and you forgot it's a daggone microwave like yo <laughs> it's crazy all right microwave beverage cook by food type cook by time defrost popcorn reheat all that stuff it says make sure the turntable is placed with the side marked top facing up use the clear glass tray place food on microwavable uh, place food or microwavable container directly on the clear glass tray to cook your food and then of course you have slow cook soften melt and steam cook all right um, the turntable must always be placed where, uh, when using the microwave. And it says the glass tray should always be placed when used when microwaving. All right, let's go into this. It says cookware, make sure the cookware is suitable for microwaving. All right, it says place food on microwavable container directly on the clear glass tray to cook your food. All right, microwave preset selection. So we're looking at beverages. Uh, we got water, you got coffee, you got tea, you got milk, you got hot chocolate. You can do it by the ounces. Um, if you got cooked by food type, of course, you got cooked by time, you got defrost, one pound quick. We got the by time, you got by weight, you got by food type. Of course, you got popcorn and all that stuff. You got reheat. Of course, we talked about that a little bit some. It's for the microwave portion, casserole, chicken, pasta, rice, soup, all that type of stuff. Um, softening slash melt. We're used to this on a lot of the new microwave that's coming out now, of course. You can do melt ice cream. Again, I talk about ice cream being melted. It's the best with some apple pie. Ah! Speaking of that, I might get some today. Either way, let's get it. Caramel, cheese, chocolate chips, um, cream cheese, marshmallows. Oh, man. Yeah, marshmallows is... Oh, man. All right, Express. It says select Express 30 sec seconds to initiate a microwave cook mode. The oven will start immediately. And it says um, time can be added by pressing the 30 or one minute. All right, so we're used to that on the, just your standard microwave. It says initiate cook time can be modified to a preferred time up to six minutes. This, this can be changed in the settings. All right, cool. We got that power levels we talk about the power levels it says you can change the power level before or doing a cook i'm um, doing a cooking program here are some examples of using for various power levels all right number 10 fish bacon vegetables boiling um, liquids of course you got medium for gentle cooking meat and poultry baking casseroles and reheating that's number seven you got five slow cooking and tenderizing of stews Low two or three, defrosting, simmering, delicate sauces, warm one, keep food warm, softening butter. All right, let's dive into this. Cooking tips. When cooking bacon, layer strips on a plate. It says layer strips on, on a plate. Cover each layer with a paper towel. It says when cooking vegetables, use a microwave-safe casserole bowl. Cover with microwave-safe lid 
or vented plastic wrap. All right, and of course, we're talking about for frozen vegetables, follow the package instructions for adding water. For fresh vegetables, add two tablespoons of water for each setting. All right. Microwaving defrost. Defrost by food type, automatically set the defrosting times and power levels based on many menu tree selection to give an even defrosting results for food types, poultry and fish weighing up to six pounds. All right, and of course you got your defrost time, defrost weight, you can pause that as well. Um, conversion guide, it says if the weight of the food is stated in pounds and ounces, the ounces must be converted to tenths, 0.1 of a pound. All right, so that's how that works there, I like that. So you can pause that, look into that if need be. All right, cool. And again, don't forget you can pause it as well. All right. Um, defrosting tips. Use defrost by food tip for meat, poultry, and fish. Use defrost by time for most other frozen foods. All right, so you can pause that, look at it while you're at the video as well. Um, that's what we have there. Man, awesome, awesome, awesome. But I'll make, I can read this one. When defrosting three or more pounds of ground or cubed meat, remove defrost portions at the turn signals. All right, so that's cool there. Liking that. All right, microwaving. We already talked about defrost, popcorning, um, as well as sensing cooking. It says the Advantium microwave mode features sensor cooking. The oven automatically senses when food is done and shuts itself off, eliminating the need to program food times and power levels. Microwave sensor programs ground meat, popcorn, three ounces to 3.5 ounces, soup, rice, vegetables, uh, canned, fresh or, fro or frozen, chicken reheat, pasta reheat, plate, food reheat, soup, I reheat vegetable reheat as well. So let's read a couple things underneath of here where it says, do not open the oven door. Um, do not open the oven door until time is counting down in the display. If the door is open, close it and press resume immediately. If the food is not done enough, use cook by time in the microwave selected to cook for more time. Note, do not use the sensor feature twice in succession on the same food portion. Why? It may result in severe cooked, overcooked or burnt food. If the food is not done enough at the end of the sensor cook time, use cook by time in the microwave selector to cook for more time. All right, so that's where we are right there as well. So you can also pause this um, as we're looking at this and we're gonna dive into where it says notes about the reheat program. Reheated foods may have wide variations in temperature. Some areas may be extremely hot. It is best to use cook by time and not reheat for these foods. Bread products, food that must be reheated uncovered, foods that need to be stirred or turned, foods calling for a dry look or crisp surface after reheating. All right, so that's where we are there. So we can also dive into the sensor cook, uh, cooking cookware. The proper containers are covered are essential for best sensor, sensor cooking. And then of course we got a, uh, uh, a diagram or a, a video or picture that you can see where it says covered, vented, and it says dry off dishes so they don't mislead the sensor. All right, so that's how you do that there because every food got water content in it so you just want to make sure it doesn't throw your sensor off. All right, so let's see what else we got as far as the microwaving as well. Microwaving steam cook feature. Man, we forgot it's a steam cook feature as well. It says for best results, use steam or simmer bowl. Add two tablespoons of water when steaming vegetables. It says menu selection for sensor steam, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, carrots, cauliflowers, potatoes, rice, squash, zucchini, stuff like that as well. And it also has a menu selection for timed steam. All right, so that's what that is right there. Um, we have asparagus, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, carrots. We got one cups, two cups, four cups, one cups, two cups, four cups, depending on the cups that you're using as well. You can use that um, as what is described here in the chart. Let's go over to some more stuff. It says menu selection for time steam continued. You got um, cauliflower, chicken breast, fish, green beans, potatoes. You got um, ounces depending on the chicken breast. One, one piece, two piece, six to eight ounces, eight to 10 ounces, 
stuff like that as well so you can check this chart out as you are um, going to the owner's manual again it's going to be in the description box so that you can see that as well all right so we're not going to be able to go everything you got potatoes shrimp um so we're not going to um really do that as much all right so things that are normal interference and oven heat all right so so these are the couple things that you can think about as you check out this microwave man to really get an understanding of everything that it does this is a microwave that i would say i've never seen a microwave this much fully loaded with everything that you get with it um it is phenomenal as far as the functions and the features and what you can do so and here's the popcorn ounces you can see in the video like we described there as well so you can see that but we're coming to an end of the video man of course it's me your boy richie rich man we diving into this microwave man we loving this microwave as far as the functions and features then we're going to finish the next portion of this joint man you already know we are out of here consumer plant support peace all right so for this portion of the video we're going to focus on the price how much it's going to cost you might cost you a little might cost you a lot either way it's gonna cost you all right so we're gonna focus on the ge built in convection oven with advantium technology and platinum glass all right so let's dive into the website that we normally use on these videos we're gonna dive into best buy first and let's get it all right all right so according to the best buy website we are on it right now you can see that this unit is about two thousand seven hundred and eighty nine dollars and ninety nine cents um, they do always have um, financing that you can do for the next 24 months. That is $116.25. All right, so from looking at it, of course, it's a GE Cafe. We talk about this particular appliance is a notch above your standard GE. So you have your GE, you have GE Profile, you got GE Cafe, and you have GE Monogram. All right, so you have different levels to this. All right, so when you're looking at this GE, you got to look at that and keep that in mind as well. They do not have any other color, but the color that you see here is what they have. Um, right now, that's what you're going to pay on the Best Buy website as well. All right. And of course, always remember, price is subject to change um, depending on the holiday, depending on any special um, sales or rebates they might be offering. You have to keep that in mind when we shoot these videos as well. All right. Price is subject to change. So let's dive into the Home Depot website to see what they got. All right. So Home Depot website. Not much change in difference really in the price. You're looking at $2,788. Um, you're saving um, $311. So roughly you can say this unit is about $3,000. All right, and it's a 27 inch, 1.7 cubic feet. So when you look at that, you can see that as well. Some of the pictures that we can show, again, check out the intro portion of the video, man. That will help a lot. But you can also finance this appliance as well through um, or get a Home Depot card. So you're looking at $117 for the next 24 months. The same as Best Buy as well, but roughly you're gonna be spending about $2,788. We're gonna round it to about three grand. So that's how much you're gonna be paying for this appliance. All right, let's see what else Lowe's can offer because we already know sometimes Lowe's is a little bit different. So let's see what they say. All right, so Lowe's is not giving you really much. Um, it's saying right now it's about $3,099. All right, so like I said, between 3000 originally on certain sites then you can get it for about 3100 all right and it says plus up to 2000 in rebates all right so again i don't know exactly what that means you might want to make sure you contact lowes to see if you qualify for the rebate or what can you do to get this rebate because you can get up to two thousand dollars all right so keep that in mind they also have a payment plan there is a higher than best buy it's higher than home depot you're looking at 130 dollars per month um, su um, suggested um, payment within 24 months special financing and it's starting now which is July the 5th 2021 all right and of course you can insert different buttons to learn more so we could probably somewhat dive into that since we're recording it you can actually see it so that you will be able to know exactly what to do and how to do it if this is the um, the route that you want to take all right again price is subject to change so we're always going to say that so this is the GE 1.7 
built-in convection microwave. It's a five-in-one microwave too. So when we dissect the price portion of this video, you'll um, the price, the functions, the features, you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. All right, I don't see anything else, man. This is what it is. This is the end of the price video for the GE built-in wall oven, man. You're talking about about roughly about three thousand dollars, man. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty steep. It's pretty pricey and um, of course we're gonna check out the rest of the video man So hang with your boy. You already know it's Richie Rich at Consumer Plus Report man We out of here to the next part. Peace. All right, so for this portion of the video We're gonna focus on the warranty 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 What's the manufacturer warranty? All right, what are you getting you didn't purchase this appliance? What is the manufacturer giving you right now for this particular appliance that you are purchasing? So we're gonna dive into the Home Depot website right now and scroll all the way at the bottom because they always have some good stuff here that we like to dive into. Um, again, all the stuff is gonna be inside the description box as well when we give you that information. So we're gonna tap into where it says warranty. Um, the warranty is a little bit different depending on where you go, right? So right now, this is just a standard for um, GE gas oven warranty. See, that's totally different from what we're looking at. All right, so I'm gonna back out of that real quick and go into the use, care, and guide. And let's see what we got as far as the warranty. All right, so it says limited warranty page 27. So let's jump into page 27 so we can check out the warranty. All right, so we're almost there. Now we gotta go fast, real fast through this joint so that we can dive onto the warranty. All right, so here we are with the manufacturer warranty, man. Advantium Oven Limited Warranty. It says cafeappliance.com. That's where if you have any information, it says all warranty service is provided by our factory service centers or an authorized, cust or authorized customer care technician to schedule service online. Of course, vid visit us at cafeappliance.com slash service. All right, so let's look at the cafe. Again, it's a notch above your standard GE. We discussed that in the video as well. Um, this is an Advantium technology, so it's a little bit different as well. You can get this in 120 volts, or you can get it in 240 volt microwave, all right? So, but we're dealing with the 120 volt one, all right? So it says, for the period of one year from the date of the original purchase, any part of the oven which fails due to a defect in materials or workmanship, during this limited one year warranty, Cafe Appliances will also provide free of charge all labor and related service costs to replace the defective part. All right, so that's standard. One year manufacturer warranty. Let's dive into um, the additional five year warranty that you're getting. It says five years from the date of the original purchase. The magnetron tube, if the magnetron tube fails due to the magnetron tube. If the magnetron tube fails due to a defect in materials or workmanship during the five year limited warranty, you will be responsible for any labor or in home service cost. All right, so as you can see, um, you're getting an additional five year warranty just on the magnetron tube. This is a common part that typically goes bad in the microwave, causing it not to heat up. We're gonna dive into that part and let you know exactly what part it is that's covered in the five year warranty as well. We're gonna show you that part and we're gonna explain that in the parts portion of the video. But this portion of the video, you're gonna get in a one year warranty and a five year warranty. All right, so we talk about at times what cafe would not cover. All right, so these are some of the stuff if you wanna pause the video so that you can see exactly what is covered and what is not being covered. Sometimes we like to dive into it a little bit as far as just some minor stuff that could be or could not be. Um, one says that damage caused after delivery, stuff like that, they're not covering that. Product not accessible to provide required service, they do not cover that. Uh, improper installation, delivery or maintenance, they're not covering that. All right, so you wanna do that as well. Um, it says exclusion of implied warranties. It says your soul, um, your solo, or soul, your soul and exclusive remedy is product repair as provided in this limited warranty. Any uh, implied warranties, including the implied warranties of merch merchantably, man, if I could pronounce that, or fitness for a particular purpose or limited to one year or the shortest period allowed by law all right so you can read that you can probably pronounce that word better than i can either way this is just a warranty portion of the video we're going to dive a little bit into home depot um 
just to see if they provide anything. You can always ask for an extended warranty. And the price of this joint, man, to be honest with you, this is something that you might want to consider because the price is so high. It's about $3,000. So if you want to buy a five-year warranty, you can see that I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You can see the five-year warranty uh, for $299. Um, 99 so roughly about 300 bucks the three-year warranty about 200 bucks so spend an additional 300 or 200 bucks you can get a, an extended warranty through um, the geek squad at Best Buy um, Lowe's also provides some of these things as well so wherever you get it from just shop around for the best extended warranty if you decide that you want to purchase one you might want to consider it because again this unit is about three thousand dollars uh, but again, that part of it is up to you. Um, so if you want to make a decision on that, man, that is it. But this is the warranty portion of the video. Of course, we are done and we're going to dissect the rest of this video, man, as we always do when we get in the lab. All right, peace. So for this portion of the video, we're going to focus on the parts. Man, let's talk about the parts. How much is going to cost you um, per repair? So these are the things that, um, to be honest with you, most customers do not think about. But we're here to help you to think about it for at least for a little bit because most appliances break. It is common for them to break within the first five to 10 years. So they last roughly about 10 years nowadays, right? Remember back in the day, you can get 20, you can get 30 years out of them. That's not the same. That's not the world that we live in. But today, when you're talking about appliances, they do break. They do have common issues that typically goes bad from wear and tear over time. So we're gonna focus on those. We're gonna focus on in general, how much is gonna cost you if a service technician come out. So let's dive into this video. Let's check this out. This is the parts portion. All right, so we are on the GE website, of course. Normally we just put the model number in. I'm gonna uh, show you guys this as well. All right, so you can see the model number is located there. We're gonna dive into that. Click on the model that we have, which is at the bottom here. So I wanna make sure that we click the right one, right? Um, so that we can actually see the parts. I think this one is a little bit off, so I'm gonna go back um, realistically so I can get the right one, because that's different, all right? So we're gonna tap into that too as well. So we're gonna see the parts. All right, so we're gonna talk about some of the common issues that typically goes bad on these appliances along with any parts that's covered for an extended period of time. So we can start off where it says door parts, all right? So we can start off on that. So let's dive into that real quick, the door parts. So we're gonna allow that to load up. And you can see right here, so you can purchase the door handle, which is 1009, or you can purchase the actual frame, which is 1388, they might call it something else. Also, you have the hinges, which is 1389, right? So we can dive into that um, as we uh, figure out what the price and the parts is, is going to um, take place in this joint. All right, so that's 1009. So you're looking at the stainless steel door handle, right? That part is $135.50. Right now, it's saying that it's temporarily out of stock. One of the things about GE appliances right now, especially within the pandemic, it was difficult and it is still somewhat difficult to get certain parts. So you want to keep that in mind. You also want to shop around, go to different outlets, go to different parts stores. Um, we recommend a couple. We can put them in the description box as well if you're looking for your own parts. That's if you're mechanically inclined and this is something that you can do. All right. So as far as the door handle, you're looking at $135.50. Um, door handles do break. It is a common issue at times for door handle to break for them to wear out. So if let's round this up real quick. You're looking at part. If you round the part up to 150, our standard labor that we're using our examples are $150. So we're looking at 150 for the part, which is a door handle, 150 for the labor. You're looking at about $300. <laughs> dollars Let me write that down right now. $300 for this. Okay. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's look at 1388. So this is the actual stainless steel door. Even the stainless steel door is a lot cheaper than just you're getting your handle, which is kind of crazy. But either way, the stainless steel door is 10640. So if that was the break, was the crack, you need a new door, you just order the whole assembly. All right. Um, hinges. All right. Uh, 1389 is $45.90 a piece. 
On these units, the hinges do not break often, but there are door hinges, so it does seize up over time. They can break, they can pop, they can damage, the door won't close properly. Whatever it is that needs to take place, door hinges are a common issue. I'm not saying that it is on this particular model, but it is a common issue. So for the sake of the video, we're gonna say it's a common issue because door hinges are common. So it's $45.90 for this. That's pretty cheap. Um, normally when we order a door hinge, um, we will normally replace them both. So you're looking at about $50 a piece for each of these. So let's say it's 50 and 50, that's 100. Labor's 150. So you're looking at um, about 250 bucks. I'll round it to about 350 just to give us some leeway. So you're gonna spend between 250 and 350 for this unit. If you're looking at about anything, I would say if 400 is a little too high um, for that, um, so you can probably just talk them into trying to help you out or give you a discount or something like that. I think that's a little bit too high. All right, so let's focus on another part of the video. Let's go into another part. Let's go into the control parts. All right, so that's your control board, everything there. Let's dive into that joint. Let's see the parts. Let's see what parts go back. All right. I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see that as well. So we can look at, you have, it looks like a fan, you have a uh, display board, um, the panel that you see here as well, looks like another board, but we're gonna call it what the manufacturers call it. I don't wanna call it out a name because it's just a general um, name that I'm giving you guys. All right, so 211 right here, you can see that. That's the single harness, that's $45.50. Let me zoom in a little bit out of here so you can see that as well. Come on. All right, that's 45.50. We're looking at 212. Again, that's another harness. That's 16.90. Um, another a harness which is 213. You're looking at 27.60. These are not common issues for this harness to go bad as well. Main power control board. That's 2006. That's 55 dollars and 60 cent for a power control board. That's really affordable. That's really cheap. I like that price. Really, really cheap. So again, um, control boards can go bad. Um, they are common issues that typically go bad with appliances. So you're looking at $55.60. Um, if you round it up to about $100, labor $150, you're looking at about $250. Um, we like to add another 100 on top of it. So between $250 and $350 as far as the repair cost for this particular unit if you needed to get it done. All right, we got the control bracket, which is 208. Not a common issue. Again, you have another power board, which is 209. So that's in the back, right? Whew, 209 power board. That's 8670, right? If you happen to need that power board. And this is why it's so expensive. When you're dealing with controls and technology, every time you implement stuff like that, sensors, everything, anything that's automatic, when it's automatic, you gotta pay for it, right? Especially if you got a touch screen, swiper screen, control boards, anything like that, it's gonna cost you some bread. The power board again is 8670. Um, we discussed that. Another control board that costs some bread. You have two power boards in here from looking at the video. You have the 209 and you have 231. Um, that one is 8670, we discussed that. The other one is 8110. But the main control board or the module board, you're looking at 38610, all right? So you're talking about $400 for the control board, the module board, then you're looking at 150 labor, you're looking at 550, right? So I'll say between 550 and 650, how much you gonna pay if you happen to need your uh, module board to be replaced? All right, so if it's not responding or you can't see any displays or is it shorted or burned out due to normal wear and tear, could be a power surge, whatever it is that can happen on here, man, you're gonna have to spend some money for that joint and that's how much it costs. But it beats buying a new unit as well. So as, 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 as expensive as the part is right here, uh, more than likely you're gonna get it fixed because it, it beats spending another three grand. All right, so, so that's the thing. Um, single harness 245 again their board supporter um, stainless steel controller that's 2381 whoo so this is the touchpad right so your touchpad six hundred dollars <laughs> all right so let's round that up you're talking about seven hundred dollars for the part labor 150 you're looking at 850 
So you're gonna spend between 850 and 950 for this touch pad. My gosh, stainless steel glass pad. Yes, you're gonna spend some money. It's touch screen, it's glass. You're gonna spend some bread for that joint, man. So yeah, it's gonna cost you some money. All right, look at the diagram as far as the speaker, which is 2555. This is the speaker here. That's $51.60 if you have a new speaker. And right now it's saying it's temporarily out of stock. All right, so again, when you're looking at the control panel or the, the controller, that's 609. And if you look at the control board, that's $386.10. All right, so you're gonna spend some bread for this joint. So let's dive into the next thing. We're gonna go into the oven cavity. It's probably not much there, but we can dissect that a little bit. All right, let's see what we got. Oven cavity. Man, so um, let me zoom out a little bit. You can see that there. Um, you got your canopy or maker. That's just, a, that looks like the wave guide to me. That's number 3000. Let's see what that is. Um, well, I don't, yeah, that's not a part of that. That's not what it is. Um, that's nine dollars seventy seven cents. Not a common issue. Outer case, which is three thousand one. If you happen to need the case, that's forty five dollars and forty cents. Um, the mount, three ten. Um, let's see what else. The seal tape. All this stuff is not common issues, man. Trim left, right. Trim right, right hand, left hand. Um, turntable motor with gasket. Turntable motors are common issues right here. That's number 387. Zoom in on that as much as we can there. You can see that right there. That price for that, it is $40.80. This is a common issue for turntable motors to not turn or to make noises when they're turning their motors and they wear down and they're small. All right, so a small mechanical motors, they do tend to wear down. So if you're looking at that, you're looking at possibly the part is $100 labor 150 you're looking at about 250 all right um 250 to about 300 i don't want to say uh 350 because that's a lot when the part is 40 bucks all right that's real high so i don't want to go too overboard with it um it says 35 that's your trim bottom 35 okay so the, that's the trim there that's 34 dollars and 40 cents if you happen to need a new trim all right um top cover top cover um, bracket uh, base again it's not much there other than the turntable motor and your trim um, everything else is pretty durable um, right so that's where we are so we can actually go back and find out what else we can check out let's check out the interior of the microwave where we're talking about the convection portion all right let's rock all right let's see we got convections turntable motors all that stuff sensors all right so we're going to dive into this joint real quick let's see what we got so the microwave glass tray and all this stuff you can get this stuff yourself man so you don't have to spend any outrageous amount of money for this type of stuff all right so i just wanted to um bring it up a little bit so you guys can see that all right so cool this stuff you can purchase yourself Microwave turntable shaft that can wear out. It's plastic, $44.90. You can probably do this stuff yourself. You ain't gotta be mechanically inclined. Um, Invantium rack is $55.60. You can order that yourself. Um, speed cook uh, metal tray, that's $30.44. Again, you can do that. Um, speed cook metal tray, $97.70. You can order that stuff yourself. Power cord, of course, is different. Not a common issue here. Power cords don't burn out like that. It can though because it's a part, but it's $34 if you happen to need that. Uh, the sensors do can go bad on these microwave where they give you an, an error message to let you know that the food is not sensing. It will work when you're dealing with just the microwave portion, which is the manual setting where you hit um, time and then run it for a minute. It comes on for a minute, for a minute. But if you're doing like popcorn or any sense, sensor cooking, that can affect it. So if you happen to need that, you're looking at $65.80. Part, we're gonna round it up to about $100. Labor, you're looking at $150. Um, total, you're looking at about $250 um, for the unit, all right? $250. Um, uh, $250, and, between $250 and $300. I'm not gonna go higher than that. 
All right, here you go. Another thermostat as well, $8.50. Thermostats are common issues, especially if it's a cavity thermostat that burns out a lot. All right, so you want to keep that in mind. A common issue, but again, look at the part. You probably spend three dollars for the part. Labor is one fifty. You're looking at one eighty, or roughly between one eighty and uh, um, I'll say about two twenty to get that done. All right. Um, again, another thermostat, six dollars and seventy cents. Um, convection assembly looks looking at fifty four hundred. So you can get the whole entire convection assembly for uh, for fifty, uh, which is fifty four hundred, which is the, the number, but it's six sixty seven dollars and ninety cents. All right. So you can get that in there as well. Or you can purchase the heating element itself. All right, depending on what it is that you need. So depending on the technician that comes out, if it's best to get the whole assembly, is it's cheap. Well, it's a little bit more, but I would get the whole assembly because it's probably cheaper to install rather than taking everything apart and replacing the heating element. So whatever, it's at the, the technician's discretion. Um, depending on what it is that you need, if it's best to just order everything because maybe other parts could go bad or the part is rusting, everything else around it is rusting. So sometimes it's best to order the assembly rather than order the individual part so that you won't have to keep coming back out or you won't come back out three months later or two months later and or even a year later um, having to deal with the same issue. All right, so the, uh, the whole entire assembly is $67.90. Um, not a common issue to be honest with you on a lot of these convection ovens. They normally, um, they're durable, they last, because um, most people don't really do the convection as much as they do the microwave. So the microwave is what normally goes bad rather than the convection, all right? Unless you're using it like that. All right, so that's it as far as the interior of the microwave. We're gonna dive into the other section for this unit and go into the insulator parts, all right? So this is the last portion of the parts video. We're going to dive into that, man, so that we can take care of this joint. Let's see what we got. All right, so give me a second as this load up. All right, so you got several parts. I can see the magnetron tube, transformer, blow wheel. So you got some in important parts here that typically goes bad. All right, you got your screw, microwave holder, assembly, harness, um, cooling fan, not a common issue, but if it does go bad, again, it is a um, an oven as well, so the cooling fan can go bad and it can overheat. All right, so you're looking at $86.70. Um, part, if you need it, is um, $100, labor $150. So you're looking at about $250, between $250 and $350. All right, so that's it here as well and here on the diagram. All right, reflector, light bulbs. Again, if you need any light bulbs, man, you could probably just look up the part. You can probably get these light bulbs at Home Depot, at Lowe's, um, for a reasonable price, or even Amazon. You might want to check that out, all right? Uh, we're talking about the bracket heater and heater assembly. When we're looking at that as well, um, $33.86. I'm really trying to find it on the diagram. All right, right here, the heating element assembly. That's, well, that's for that there, too, as well. That's $43.07, not a common issue. Door switches are a common issue, right? When you open and close the door, they are plastic parts when you can see. They can burn out, short out, they can start to trip your breaker. So when you're looking at these over here, um, that's 4002, 4003. Actually, you could order the assembly, which is 4007. Uh, right here for fourteen dollars and ten cents. That's the the latch body assembly for the right side You have a right side and you have a left side so you can order either one 970 and 1410 rather than ordering the individual switches one for twenty one dollars and sixteen You know what I'm saying so more than likely the technician is gonna order the assembly because it's just cheaper to get it It's cheaper. So if you order the assembly with the new bracket um, again, $35, $40 for the part, $40 for the part, labor, you're looking at $150, looking at about $190, um, so I say roughly between $190 and about $220, all right? So just keep that in mind. Capacitor, all right, capacitor, it is a deadly part. Um, Got to make sure if you're not qualified to repair a microwave, you want to make sure that you call a specialist or someone that is familiar with it or have the experience with working with microwave. Microwaves are one of the most deadliest appliances, whether they're on or off. All right. So I know personally I've been zapped by a microwave and it was not fun. I got hit really bad, but it was not fun. So you just got to keep that in mind. 
All right, so that part, again, they're not giving you the price for that because it's no longer available, but it says the item has been replaced by this. All right, let's click on that real quick to see what we got. And of course, you got to contact GE. All right, so when you're dealing with microwave certain parts, they're not going to let you order. All right, so you got to contact GE because you got to know what you're doing. Line fuses or standard fuse, common issue, $6.07. 7, $6 all right, so if your fuse is about 30 bucks, labor 150, then you're talking about 180. So 180 between 180 and 220 as far as replacing that. All right, here we go. Transformer. Not a common issue on microwave to normally short out. The transformer is up here. Of course, you can see it in, as well. And you can see it here. Um, you're looking at 119.60. Temporary, temporarily out of stock. Not a common issue. Uh, magnetron tube is a common issue. This is one of the most common issues when your microwave does not heat up. This is what that is. All right. So um, that's what that is. You're looking at 149.50. So let's say this part is 200, and you also, when you replace the uh, the magnetron tube, um, you also have to replace the diode, and that's 5018, right? So that's nine dollars and twenty cents. So let's say this is. Um, 200 bucks for both parts labor is 150 so 200 150 looking at 350 350 between 350 and about 450 as far as getting this whole entire unit done to replace your magnetron tube and diode both parts have to be replaced together because they're connected to each other all right and of course what it says not available for online cons consumer purchase all right call block uh, the number here to schedule service so now they're not even letting you order it if you're not like qualified to do it because like i said it's a deadly it's one of the most deadliest machines that you can work on all right so when you keep that in mind again another thermostat um noise filter board here that's 5041 right up in here um that is a common issue that's thirty dollars and ninety cents um let's say if it's 50 labor 150 um you're looking at about 200 bucks I'll say between 200 and 230 bucks as far as getting this unit replaced. Um, all right, as far as the filter board, and it comes with a fuse. So more than likely, if you have a bad fuse, and if you have, well, if the technician have one, you can slide one in and find out why the fuse is blown, or if this board is um, needs to be replaced, it comes with a brand new fuse as well. So they know all that. All right, um, duck assembly. I'm not really going into that. It says heater. Uh, Maricalone, I don't know what that is. Oh, that's for the heater. Okay, I'm about to say that's 5514. All right, um, that's right up in let me see what that is. I thought it would have been up in here, um, but no, I don't see it on here. All right, it's somewhere in here 5514, but either way, that's for the heater. That's $48. Like I said, the heaters are pretty durable. All right. Um, outside of that, um, that is it. So when we're talking about parts, man, you're talking about parts for this GE microwave. It's going to cost you some bread for certain parts, man. So if you need the control panel or the glass panel, that's going to cost you about six to seven hundred bucks. When you're talking about the magnetron tube, that's about two hundred or something bucks. Um, you're looking at that control board is over three hundred something bucks, depending on what board you have. You have about one, two, three, four, at least four control boards inside this unit, man. So it's going to cost you some bread if you need to repair this unit. All right, so this is the parts portion of the video. We're going to dissect the rest of this microwave, man. We are out of here, man. It's me, your boy. Peace. All right, man. We back at it, man. Finishing up with this GE built-in microwave. This portion of the video, we're going to talk about our overall review. Let you know exactly how we feel about this microwave, man. So let's get into this joint. So first of all, you already know I got to get my notes together, man. Let me get that. All right, so we're going to start off with the warranty. All right, warranty, warranty, warranty. What's the manufacturer warranty that you're going to get with this GE built-in microwave? Of course, it comes with the standard one-year manufacturer warranty, both parts and labor. They also give you an additional five-year warranty on the magnetron tube. This is a common part that typically goes bad in a microwave that allows the microwave to heat up or if you have any issues with it not heating up all the way, it could be sparking, it could be a burning smell, anything like that at all, dealing with the magnetron tube, if it affects the heating portion of it or that's the issue with it that you need a new magnetron tube, that part is going to be covered for the first five years. That's just the part, not the labor. So when you look at the parts as far as this portion of the video, we insist that you guys check that joint out. You're talking about at least $200 for the parts. 
So they're saving you $200 as far as the part for that as well. All right, and then of course you will have to factor in labor for the company that comes out um, whenever you need service to repair this microwave. All right, so as far as the grade for the warranty, we will give it a four because they gave you a little bit more than what um, most or an average microwave would give you these days. It's a little bit different, all right? So we go with that grade because we like it. All right, the next portion of the joint, we're gonna go with price. On this particular microwave, we've noticed there's two types of this particular microwave. One with a 120 volt microwave and the other one is a 240 volt. So it all depends on which one you get. The, the uh, 120 volt, which is your standard plug that we're used to just plugging our phones in inside our home, that's 120. So when you're dealing with that, that's about 2700. If you're dealing with the one that's um, 240 volts, just like if you have an electric dryer, the circuit breaker is going to be bigger. So what you'll do is that is a lot higher in price. It's about 3000 to about 3100, depending on where you get it from. All right, so you can have both of those appliances. You can choose whichever one, but you're talking about an average price about $3,000. It, it is a high-end appliance as well, so you have to factor that in. It is not your standard GE. It is a high-end appliance, and when you're dealing with appliances on that level, you're gonna start to spend some money. So that's why as far as the grade that we're gonna give it, as far as the price, we give it a three because it's just average, all right? If you can get it for less than that, um, it's a good uh, microwave to purchase as far as the price if you can get it less than that. All right, so just keep that in mind. All right, let's move on to the next thing. Let's talk about parts. Man, when this appliance breaks down, man, on a microwave, like we talked about, the magnetron tube being a common issue, that's one. The diode, you normally replace the diode and the magnetron tube as well. I'm not sure if the magnetron, the diode is going to be covered along with your magnetron tube. That's something that you're going to have to ask GE when you call in if you need service, all right? Um, like I stated before, that part, which is the magnetron tube, is like 200 bucks. The diode is really cheap, um, 10, 15 bucks, maybe 20, but of course you got to remember there's a markup. When you're looking at the door or the handle, that's a hundred and something dollars. The door, that's a hundred dollars if you need that as well. Um, outside of that, um, of course, the control boards, right? So you have two in the back, you have one in the front, then you have the main board. That's like 300 and something dollars um, that you would probably need. The glass, um, platinum glass screen, that's about 700 bucks. So with the parts, when we added each and every grade, we did about 10 parts as far as, between nine and 10 parts, as far as the price um, for the part and the labor, and we did an average. So with this unit being at least $3,000 and you're gonna spend on average to get this unit repaired, possibly around 350 bucks, all right? So that is a awesome amount to pay in comparison to how much a new one of these costs, all right? So that's why we're gonna give the grade as far as the parts a five because it's extremely reasonable as far as if you can afford this for about $3,000, you can afford to get it repaired at $300, all right? So it's not that expensive, and we really like that joint as well. All right, so now we're gonna factor in functions and the features. You know this is my favorite part. This particular unit is a microwave, and to be honest with you, that's the simplest part of it, the microwave. Let's focus on everything else. They got a precision cooking that you can cook from a halogen light up top, you can cook from underneath with a heating element, and you can cook in the middle with the microwave. It's, it's, I've never seen a microwave like this. With so many different options to choose from, depending where you're, what you're cooking, you're cooking from so many directions, top, middle, and underneath, allowing your food to heat up that much more better. I mean, you can toast stuff in here. That's why when you're talking about French fries and pizza, it's nothing like when you go and, and shop and buy some uh, French fries that you gotta put in the microwave. It's not the same. This particular one, you don't have to do that. You can actually toast it. You can do that with pizzas as well. Uh, it's an oven. You can put that in there. It's a convection bake oven. You can broil in here as well. You have a warmer. You have a proofer. I mean, you're talking about fully loaded. You have steam, uh, steam, steam cooking as well. This microwave is self-clean. You can self-clean the microwave. It also have Wi-Fi connect that you can connect to your phone remotely to do an app and communicate back and forth with the microwave. I mean, it's, it's, it's fully loaded. You have over a hundred and something recipes that you can choose from that's ingrained inside of the, the memory of the microwave. I mean, it's, it's, if, again, it's tailoring so many stuff 
to whatever your needs are. And that's the great thing about it. I love this appliance as well. It's it, And then you have the digital LCD screen, touch screen, everything there. Like, it's awesome. So you already know off top, man, we're giving this grade a five. I'm sure I'm probably forgetting something in here, but again, check out the functions and the features. We didn't dive into this joint to give you guys our grade. All right, so let's talk about that. Functions and features, we gave you a five. Warranty, we gave you a four. Price, three. Parts, five. Our overall grade tallying everything up is about a 17 divided by four. You're looking at a 4.25. When you're talking about a microwave that we really, really like, we really like this microwave, but it is a high-end microwave and this is not for everybody. All right, so if you're interested in a microwave or an appliance and you want us to review, shoot us an email, but we will recommend this joint to anybody that's looking for a microwave of this caliber because we understand that the price is not an average price for a typical microwave unless you can afford it. But we recommend it and we like it. All right, so GE, bravo on this built-in microwave. We really like the joint, really like the way that it looks. Everything is so nice in this microwave. We really, really love it. All right, so you already know what time it is. Man, it's me, your boy, Richie Rich, at Consumer Fine Support. You help me, I help you, we both help each other. Till next time, I am out of here, man. Peace.